girl, my heart is pumping. Uh-huh. Ah, I don't even know. You should run. Oh, is that good? Wait, 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 wait. Welcome back, gay schools, and everyone in between to our YouTube channel, The, the Horror Van Wagon. <laughs> My name is Sergio. And my name is Cody. And we are boys for horror analysis. Criticism. And spooky. Okay. And sometimes kooky. Entertainment. And welcome back to another fall of the House of Usher reaction. Today, we are going to be covering episode four. But in case you need a reminder, in the previous episode, Camille just bit the big one. So we're kind of about to see what the family is going to react to this, like, mm -hmm. or if they react at all, or if they found out. Obviously, the employees found out and stepped into the crime scene. Yeah, but it's also gonna be interesting because she was the one who was spitting all this stuff because she was like the PR person. So mm -hmm. who's gonna be doing that now in her stead? Now remember, we are going into the reactions with two different POVs. Mm -hmm. I don't have much experience or really don't know anything at all about Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, just know that there's ravens, um, <laughs> but don't know how they go about it. But I'm also loving uh, how much Cody knows about Edgar Allan Poe and also the references that they are making within each episode. Yeah, and so far I am really enjoying the way that they are retelling these stories in a way that I think is is really doing a good homage to the mm -hmm. source material, but going out on a different limb and still like giving us a great story. Yes, so make sure that you stay after the reaction because Cody will probably dissect or break down what we have just seen. If you remember from our previous reaction, he actually gave us a, like a synopsis of uh, Rue at the morgue. The murder at Room Morgue. See, I don't know. See, I don't know. I'm new. And the one thing that I do want to correct from the last episode is that I thought that there was an episode titled down the line called The Casco Amontillado, and there is not. But I do still stand by that I think Monty is a reference to The Casco Amontillado. Yeah, I think so. Imagine Mike Flanagan on an interview says, like, I don't know what anyone's talking about. <laughs> Like, no, I didn't plan it, but that's a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> now, we are just excited to get into this reaction as you are. So before we do, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click that notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. And if you want to support the channel even more, you can go over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the horror bandwagon, or you can click the join button below to join our YouTube membership. And finally, don't forget to check out our Discord, where you can talk to us about the fall of the House of Usher and anything else that is on your mind. The link is gonna be in the description below, but without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so the black cat is a story about regret. So I can't wait to see where this goes. Ooh, I hear my pussy meowing. Cat, female, about yay big. Please tell me you can handle that. Oh, <gasps> ah! <laughs> I'm just loving all the fucking characters that Verna is playing. I love it. What about that one? No, not available. That's a purebred British short hair. We've already had four applications. Not available. I wonder why. Fucking uncanny, isn't it? Like I said, she isn't available. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's like the exact cat that he needs. <laughs> into an orphanage. Set you up water sides in a new facility. Tiny little kitty hot tubs. They'd hate that. And dress you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the money that he must have. Jesus Christ. Wow. You little fucker, you saved my That's life. That's like a Disney cat. That's uh, the Thackeray Binks right there. Oh, sorry. I guess daddy's out getting a latte or something. <laughs> oh! Little cunt. Oh! You've been marked. You've been marked. Though. Did you recognize that Verna was giving him a warning? Mm -hmm. Like, you can't have that. It's just Madeline. What's she doing down there? So this is really interesting because in the fall of the House of Usher, Roderick, the brother, is taking care of his sister, Madeline, who's really sickly. At one point, she dies. So he buries her downstairs. Yeah. And then he starts to hear sounds like she might still be alive. Oh, no. Vic, what? this is your lab, your animals. I don't know. I didn't send her there. Maybe. Mm? Oh, 
I like that. Like he's being emotional about her. This is just awful. I'm so sorry. Camille was such a. Why is it talking? It really, it shouldn't be. <laughs> you leave Juno alone. You leave her alone. To announce the loss of our beloved Camille Espana, aged 35. Wait, wait, wait. The oh, family name in Murder at the Rue Morgue, the two women who were killed, were the Espanias. Snap to that. And I don't care if Madeline tells you to fart into a microphone on national television, you fucking do it. We're at battle stations. I'm the commanding officer. This show, this show likes to talk about farts. Mm -hmm. Like, flatulence is, like, high up there. Is Gina in the will? Oh, no. Gina's not really in the will. Is she dead? I am still in the room. <laughs> you know what though i mean that ring on her finger is probably worth enough on its own i need juno like more in the show give me more juno you hit a button that enhances it you can zoom in but that doesn't actually enhance well it. then please zoom in um. arthur <laughs> well it's a little tough to tell maybe if you could i don't know enhance it that's um my boy thinks that this is like mission impossible like technology Take up arms, we're at war. I don't know who, I don't know how, but I know what it feels like when a bullet flies by. Even what if Verna is the one who is the leak to the government? Oh, for sure. But I wouldn't put it past uh, the sister. Mm -hmm. Because she is someone who would protect herself. I'm just pissed about the Gucci collar. Don't sweat it. I'm going to put out some more food for her, though. Maybe we can coax her out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's nice to be like, yeah, sure, your cat's back, but what about the expensive collar that I bought? <laughs> ah! Oh! Juice! Juice! What the fuck? Yo, Mike Flanagan is really good. Or maybe maybe he didn't direct this specific episode, but I know overall he's pretty good with jump scares. A half hour late to your honor's court, I'd expect to be charged with contempt. What are you suggesting, Mr. Dupin? Just an observation. Oh, I missed that before, too. Dupont is the name of the super smart guy in Murder the Remark. Oh. Discussing the parameters of contempt of court, Mr. Pemp. Yours and his own, seems. I'm afraid it couldn't be helped. What the fuck? He literally was just... You know that judge has gotten some donations over the Jesus years. Jesus Christ. So why was she here? I don't know. Wait, maybe because you, you told her to go and get a profile done on me. I mean, you are the one who's like, try to give me information and I'll give you money. Very fun. How? With the password. You have her password? We have all your passwords. <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? They got to know everything about y'all. She didn't see if it unlocks. But it isn't hers. I understand. Maybe try anyway. <laughs> Mark Hamill's doing a great job. Mm -hmm. But that's a pretty, pretty good picture. Come on, girl. I need to do some things before I go back to the office. I'll tell you where to go. Oh, they know exactly who it is. They're like, oh shit, we're being hunted. We'll circle back to that later. Yes, always figured it was because people were more likely to take the money, less likely to complain. I don't know, maybe. Now, are you going to disclose about how it has failed on many animals? <laughs> take over. Keep your heart beating perfectly. Also, it looks like a piece of chicken. <laughs> I'm it just saying. Does. It does look like a piece <laughs> of chicken. We'll perform the surgery yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she is. You know, she's very, very excited about this, too. Well, Dr. DeRees doesn't know about it. Ooh, messy, messy. Someone else's phone got mixed in with her things. And I think he is delusional. We find whoever this phone belongs to and get it back to them. I think he's seeing what he wants to see, which is nothing. <laughs> oh, shit, that scares me. I was like, is there an animal underneath there? Yeah, I can do it. Well, now that you mention it, 
Mm, seriously, that's what you're thinking about right now. Hold on, hold on. Are my wish coming true? Which is. Oh, that'll help you sleep. Oh my god! I'll take it. A blowy. Let's go. <laughs> we need some sound effects, girl. We need some. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't. Oh! Creepy little fuck. <laughs> okay, these sound effects are more like eating cookies. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh! oh, shoot. What the fuck? I like felt a crap. Ah! 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 No, no. Oh, that cat is out to get you, girl. Your cat left. Your cat just. I'm throwing away the sheet. Oh man, they're fans of guts. Instead of lashing out at your employees, you pour your energy into kickboxing. Oh! 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 Oh my God! Oh my God! I'm not ready. I was talking. I was fucking talking. Jesus! Yo, this is fucking messing with me. I will knock your goddamn lights out. You raise your voice at me. You're right. You tell him boundaries. It's important. You want to maybe tell him at some point you're seeing ghosts of your dead children? Yeah, he has yet to say that. No, he has said it before where like, he was like, oh, she's like right behind you. But he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to see. Do you remember the day we met? Of course I do. I can still recall oh my God. our last summer. I can see it all. Please. Come in. Come on in. Ooh, she's like. And that was when he knew he had to divorce her. <laughs> let's do this. And I believe this doctor has been enlisting some of them in studies without fully informing them or their families about possible side effects. Oh no. Kind of sounds like what they're trying to do with the heart. And actually consenting as well. What are you getting at? Well, your signature is here. Oh no. Well, they're forging signatures, so they could have forged his signature. He cannot recall if I did or if I did not sign these particular papers, but I'm. Well, he's trying to protect the company. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a home remedy for the older one. And I see the elderberries, echinacea. You're throwing a lot at it. And he's sleeping. Damn, he's so observant. He's really good at his job. In Murder Through Morgue. I mean, this guy goes on and on and on about, like, I saw this and that made me think of this. And then I deduced that. And then I figured that okay. out. And that's why I said this. And that's why you said that. And Okay. And then they attack us for it. Fucking people. My signature was forged. No, it wasn't. Oh, <laughs> okay, cool. Problem solved. There, that would threaten us if we let them. And we are all at fucking battle stations right now. I am the commanding officer, and I don't want to hear anything out of your mouth that isn't. So that sound familiar? No, wait. That's exactly what he said to his kids earlier this episode. You should quit. We'd starve. I'll get a job. How about a degree? You gonna get one of those too? Hey, now. That's not. A uh, girl. Okay. Do we we want to talk about things here? which is doubly fucked because your father built this company as your birthright, Roderick, our birthright. Is he going to go and work with the government? And that's oh. going to get the CEO thrown out. And then he just slides right in. Like, let me just shimmy my way in there. I'm worried about you because you've always, always had it under control. Like you got some kind of magic power, but baby, you I like this guy and I have a really bad feeling for him. Me too. <sighs> Sorry to show up like this and <laughs> take a minute. <laughs> yeah, why are you running, girl? What's going on? Why she was even at this Perry's orgy. Please don't fucking say that word. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Perry's cuddle puddle. <laughs> cuddle puddle! <laughs> now we get the comments we get it. that we get it. were in there. Cuddle puddle. Don't go overdoing it with this, all right? Just a few bumps a day till the edge wears off. <laughs> Oh shit! 
This cat fucking hates you. Is it your eye? Oh, is that good? Wait, 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 wait. That's literally down your eye. You should oh. go see a doctor. Yeah, that's gotta hurt. You're gonna keep blinking and it's just gonna sting. Ah, I don't even know. Celebrate the new lifestyle brand Goldbug, which launches <gasps> on Thursday. She's there. Right, well, She's there. Oh my god. Get golden. Wait, that's my Flanagan. That's my Flanagan right oh there. My god. Wait, that's so cute. I like that. The universe is chaotic. Ooh, girl, so what are you gonna do? So what are you gonna do? You hired her. You masturbated to her. I'm built, and you can too. Oh my god. I'm built and you can too. I like his character though. I don't know why. Fucking oh wait, are you saying you did not see the pitch in there? Oh god, I'm gonna gag. I'm gonna gag. It did ten thousand years ago, but that prey drive, it's there. No matter how cute and tiny you keep breeding them. It's true. They're gonna like slide over to you and just go like, huh, huh, <laughs> Oh. That look normal. Well, I'm a little surprised she put them in the tub. I found these. <laughs> <laughs> She's in the walls. <gasps> That's where the ringing is coming what? from. Yeah. But how did she get over to the dad earlier in the episode? to squeeze into tiny spaces jump nine times their height for why does it sound like it's turning into a giant like leopard because i think he's about to die oh dear. <laughs> it's a oh 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 no 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 oh no the poor kitty yes i'm on the kitty side i'm sorry Oh my God. Oh, okay, hold on. Save that for sex. I slowly, I slowly started to be seducted by him. Like he started to seduce me. Don't fucking move! Of course he oh, has a meal on there. A Thor? Hammer? Hey. It's me, it's Freddy Bear. Are you awake? <laughs> oh my God, this guy's out of control. Uh-huh. Gonna reincarnate oh, her face? I don't think so. Oh no. Oh dude, no, oh, don't no. do it. You, girl, don't do it. Oh my god, this is the wildest thing I'm watching right now. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. Look, I know the rules. I would never see any of these girls outside the house. Yeah, because I fucking kill you. Are you sure? Maybe she only saw her, but it was probably somebody else. Mm -hmm. Thought I'd distract you. How are you feeling? Fine. Honestly, I love that red robe. I would die to have one, just to like, Walk around, have my wine. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Living life. We'll find some on Amazon. Mm -hmm. You've taken more Ligodon than just about anybody I know of. And look at you. You're a, a vision. You're. Oh, and she's asking to be off it just a mm -hmm. little bit. I'm starting to get the sense that he only likes her because she is proof that Ligodon doesn't kill everybody. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. <gasps> Oh, that is so fucking cool. Stop! What's up? Excuse us, please. Prospero is haunting your ass. Uh-huh. But before that was interrupted, I did love to see their relationship a little yeah. bit. Just because I haven't seen that between them for a, a lot. So that was good. You know, I knew vascular dementia can cause hallucinations, but I just didn't think nothing like this okay so he has the same thing that their mom had where he's oh. starting to see visions and oh no oh god oh god oh god 
Oh god, you probably should have broken up with him. Hey! Almost got her! Yeah, time to time to leave, maybe. I'm gonna find that cut, I swear! I'm surprised that hammer hasn't broken. That's a that's good merch. Well, when you have that kind of money. Oh! You don't see it. This is the first time we have like a, another person involved here. Girl, my heart is bumping. Uh huh. You should run. Yeah, it's time to go, girl. I know you love him. Stop! Stop! Oh, oh my God! Brutal. Damn. Fuck. That is. That is crazy oh my god that was a ferrari though right the car oh shit that is crazy that it comes mm -hmm. back to that all right guys so that was our reaction to episode four of the fall of house of usher i don't know if i said that all correctly you did. but <laughs> that was called the black cat now what are your thoughts so i'm still like recovering because the end was like it came at you really yeah it, it was a lot it was so like I love that this episode really, it was a journey from start to end with his character. And we kind of got like a lot of suspense and a lot of build up for, and then for that to happen, crazy. But I mean, we also had it foreshadowed with the dad, which it seems like whenever the dad is talking to Dupin, um, it seems like we get little glimpses of what is to come. Yes. And I am really starting to think that the kids are being picked off in the reverse order of when they were born. Okay. All um, right. But let's do a quick synopsis of the original The story. Black Cat. Let's so go. So in, uh, in Poe's version of the Black Cat, essentially, we talked a little bit about it the last episode. This guy has a cat named Pluto, a fully black cat mm -hmm. growing up. Loves the cat, inseparable when he's young, but as he gets older, the cat is also older and becomes kind of crotchety and grumpy. Aww. And so, like, he just, he's not as close to the cat as he used to be. Okay. And one night he comes home from just going off on this bender, is probably the best way to describe it. He well, kind of sounds drunk, like this character. And he kills the cat. He, like, the cat looked at him the wrong way. He throws it to death. I think oh. the story does, like, have his eye pop out of the socket oh, or something. Oh, my like, God. Like I didn't know that episode. Edgar Allan Poe was actually pretty gruesome in parts. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Oh, my God. And so then he buries the cat in the backyard. Okay. And the next night, or a couple days later, pretty okay. soon after this happens, he wakes up in the middle of the night. His entire house is on fire. Oh, shit. And so, like, he and his family get out safely, but the house itself is destroyed. Okay. And everything is gone except for one wall that was recently done that was, like, plaster. Okay. And burnt into it is the silhouette of a cat. Oh. So, God. and it's, like... It's really obvious that it's a cat. So everyone's like, yo, what the fuck is this about? <laughs> and so then he rebuilds the house. Everything's good. He still goes out drinking. And then at the bar, he meets a cat that looks exactly like Pluto. Okay. Except he has a white patch on his chest. Okay. And so the cat's all like nuzzling up to him. Aww. And so he's like, and so he asks around. Nobody knows whose cat it is. So he takes it home. Okay. And everything is fine. Uh, and then, uh, but the cat starts to like basically pick at him, like what this cat is doing here. Okay. And then at some point, he gets like he is downstairs with his wife in the basement, and the cat does something that really just pisses him off. So he goes to swing at the cat and he kills his wife. Oh! And so to cover it up, he walls his wife up into the wall. To hide the body. Oh, you mentioned this before, I think. Which is why I thought the brick wall with the little cat bell behind it was really interesting. Yeah. Um, so he walls her up. And then, of course, the police come. But uh, he makes a big show of how I was so good at covering everything up and, like, whatever. And then he couldn't help himself. And when the police were there for the final time, 
He's showing him around the house that he built himself. And he basically just goes up to the brick wall, which his wife is behind. And he's like, isn't this just such good construction? Isn't this a well-built house? And he hits the wall. He's like, this house, this is a butte. Oh, no. And then as soon as he hits the wall, he starts hearing this meowing. <gasps> and it turns out that when he walled his wife's body up, he walled in the cat. He walled in the cat. Oh, shit. And so, of course, like, that's where the story ends. But it's implied that, like, the police, like, they found out down. that yeah, the yeah, wife yeah. was in there. So, Aren't you guys enjoying just, like, story time with Cody? Isn't this really nice? <laughs> so this was a really interesting retelling of it because I was expecting that he was going to kill his boyfriend. Uh, yeah, from the sounds of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I also thought that, too when he came back. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, I was very nervous. But though, I do want to go back to the last episode because I said I, that I thought Camille was going to be the one involved in the Black Cat retelling. Okay. Because what would have been an interesting retelling for me is that instead of it being such a direct, like it is a black cat mm. and he kills the black cat. And then of course the, the, the ghost of the black cat comes back to make his life terrible and ruin it. Mm-hmm. I thought it would have been interesting to have a take where her two assistants were like her pets. Oh. And so something happened where she like burnt the connection with them mm -hmm. in like a fury. Yeah. And then they like revealed some company secrets or something. They mm. broke their NDAs and told Dupont something. Oh. And that she goes after them for it. And then it mm. ends up biting her in the ass. And then that's how she died. I like the way that they handled it. Yeah, I, I like this one. I will, I, so for me, based on the story that you told last uh, episode uh, with the, uh, the murder at the Rue, at Rue Morgue, um, it kind of feels like they kind of combined those two stories a little they bit. Did. Because I kind of feel like the way that he died reminded me of how one of the, one of the characters died yeah. in the other story, which was fell, fell off the window. But also... Um, at one point they do scratch his neck mm -hmm. which was like kind of reference i think was referencing that other story but this is again based off what you told me yeah so like see i'm paying attention i'm paying attention <laughs> but i i love this i love the actor i love everyone involved it's still gruesome it's still not afraid to show you shit that's happening and there was a lot of i'm gonna try to put like a warning regarding animal um stuff because yeah. it's pretty I mean, listen, I'm very sensitive to that stuff. So at some point I saw eyes gouging into a cat. Though it was also kind of funny because you know it's a fake cat. So it was like, ah, like, like it felt like a murderous cat. Also, Carla Giugino is fucking killing it. Like she must, this must have been so much fun for her to just really dive into different characters mm -hmm. and then just reveal everything at the end every single time. So good. Um, I kind of feel like they're do something different because right now we're kind of getting into a pattern, right? Yeah. Maybe in the episode things will, might change and um, you know, it's not gonna be like, I'm a person that you know. You know me. I'm the I'm death. But also, here's a reveal. <laughs> well, and it's what's really interesting to me about this too is that for the first couple episodes, I thought, okay, maybe she is like they are seeing her, but she's not physically manifested there. But she showed up on the security camera, and Arthur Pym could see her. So yeah. it's clear that like she is physically present. Mm -hmm. But I'm just. But at the same time, not because. The boyfriend didn't see anything. Yeah. Um, also, something that I I caught that I I'm still trying to find out how this or timeline wise because in the first episode we still got that jester that mm -hmm. came out of no fucking nowhere and then the guy started to bleed and that Madeline was like at, there at that time but then we realized that when there was noises happening in the house and they were coming from the basement. The dad was saying, oh, that's just Madeline. So I'm saying, like, is Madeline dead at this point? Well, in, so in the fall of the House of Usher. Which, the, that is a separate story. That's a separate story. Yeah. In the fall of the House of Usher, um, 
I, I'm I'm really spark notes in here, but basically a guy goes over to his friend Roger's also, house. Also, guys, this is literally Cody trying to kind of like simplify it, and from what he remembers, there might be a lot more details. So oh, just is. go there easy is on a us. Lot more detail, but, just go easy on us on us. Um, but basically, uh, he goes to visit his friend Roderick. His Roger, his friend Roderick is caring for his sister who is really sickly, and. Uh, but but she's described as like really pale and calm, but beautiful. Okay. And so she essentially dies while he is visiting Roderick. And Roderick is just really upset. And he takes her down to the basement where all of the family is buried. They mm -hmm. have, it's like this brass door and everything. Okay. And so then Roderick starts to think that he's hearing his sister like that she's crying or that he's hearing scratching against the door okay because it's so heavy she wouldn't be able to get and out it's the sister's name madeline oh. yes and so at the very very end madeline has broken out of the of the burial area and she comes back and she like attacks roderick oh, and shit. the friend just like runs out of the house okay and then he witnesses the house crumbles and falls in front of him because oh, neither shit. of them the have any the children it's the fall of the house of usher oh shit! And, and i'm really i'm really liking how they portray the two of them here too because even like in the story they make a comment or two about how roderick and madeline were kind of close for kinda siblings uncomfortably and, close for me for my liking so, but i i do like that it seems that from the fall of the house of usher they did take the element of that but change it to their mom mm. so i'm very interested as to like what he's gonna do to her specifically or vice versa she might get her own death which for her i feel like might be the ultimate death i feel like she is such like the leader in um Roderick's like, mind. Like she's the real brains. Of she's the, the real brains of the operation. So mm -hmm. I feel like to, you really need to outsmart her. Like she, like all the kids, they're kind of dumb in their own way, right? Like they're 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 not they're not able to get a step ahead. Um, well, and that of was everything happening because they described Verna said to Camille, "You're the clever one." Oh yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm really interested to see where this is going to so, go. For the I mean, listen, we can talk about this for hours mm -hmm. maybe we'll do a podcast episode about this we should we should because there's a lot to talk about but this episode can't be an hour long so at least our reaction <laughs> so please stay tuned for more of our reactions they're coming along on their way we promise you they're gonna come a lot faster than before we had a lot going on so we are going to make sure we release them as soon as possible but make sure to comment down below let us know what your thoughts are let us know what your thoughts about the edgar allen post up let us know if you want to hear more about cody just dissecting all of these things for us um but you know where to catch us next time until then we have been your source for heart analysis criticism and spooky and sometimes kooky entertainment bye everyone bye, bye.